Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about how to install IBM QRadar all in one. There are two ways to install QRadar on your hardware. First one is software installation and another one is an appliance installation. Software installation is a QRadar installation that uses Red Hat Enterprise Linux that is RHL operating system that you provide. The RHL version required for your installment must be provided by a third party. Also, you need to configure partitions and perform other RHL preparations before a QRadar software installation. Aside from RHL, all software installation requires you to purchase a software node entitlement. For that, you can contact your QRadar sales representative for more information about purchasing a software node entitlement. An appliance installation. It is a QRadar installation that uses the version of RHL included in the QRadar ISO. An appliance installation on your own hardware or in a virtual machine requires you to purchase a software node entitlement. As discussed earlier, you can contact your sales representative for more information. In an appliance installation, you don't need to configure partitions or perform other RHL preparations as a part of an appliance installation. Let's discuss the prerequisites for installing IBM QRadar on your hardware. Before you install the RHL operating system on your hardware, ensure that your system meets the system requirements. For IBM QRadar 7.5.0, RHL version 7.964 bit is compatible. Memory and CPU requirements. Let's discuss about the memory and CPU requirements. If you use hardware that is not provided by the IBM QRadar, ensure that your appliance meets or exceeds the specification for memory and a CPU of the corresponding IBM QRadar appliance. For the information about the specification of the QRadar appliance, you can refer IBM QRadar hardware guide. This link you can find on the video description. Your appliance must have at least 256 GB of storage available. The table shows the storage requirements for the installing IBM QRadar on your hardware with respect to system classification, appliance information, IOPS, and the data transfer rate. Note that the minimum required storage size varies based on the factors such as event size, event per seconds, and retention requirements. Ensure that the following requirements are also met. The first one, the required hardware is installed and you have the required license key for your appliance. Also, the software version for QRadar appliance in a deployment must be same version and fixed level. Deployments that uses different versions of software are not supported. After doing these checks, we need ISO files for the installation. You can download the ISO files from IBM Fix Central. Once you open the link, you need to provide the product name, that is IBM QRadar SIM. Let us select the desired version. Here, we are doing the installation of IBM QRadar 7.5.0, hence select it the same. After that, select the Browse the Fixes to continue. From that, you can select the ISO. It will direct to the latest ISO file. To proceed ahead, we need to authenticate by using the IBM credentials. Here, you can put your IBM credentials. Once this is done, we can select the options to download the file and it directs us to the ISO download link. The link also provides the SHA-256 of the file to compare it when we download it. You can use the Linux Putty session to check the SHA-256 sum. Here, we are doing the appliance installation on the virtual machine and for that we are specifying the resource details. You need to define these specifications according to your deployment. We already discussed this part during the prerequisite discussion. Once these specifications are defined, installation is started by booting. At the beginning of the video, we discussed the types of installation. Once we accept the license agreement, the appliance installation window gets pop-up here you can select the type of installations. To elaborate more on the remaining types like high availability appliance, app host appliance, and data gateway appliance, we will air the separate videos till that you can subscribe to our channel to get notifications. As mentioned earlier, we are doing the appliance installation. I'm selecting the same and proceeding ahead. Once the installation type is selected, we need to specify the type of setup. 
as this is normal AIO that is all in one setup, I selected the same. We need to do the date and time setup. If you do have time server, that is NTP server, mention the details. Select the time zone according to your requirement. Once this is done, do the IP setup and interface setup. Let a network information setup windows pops up. Here you need to provide all the details. If you don't have the public IP, you can put that field empty. Once these all details are provided, admin and root password setup window pop up. Kindly follow the password guidelines such as the length of the password characters must not be greater than 255 characters. It also shouldn't contain the space and some special characters. Here you can see mistakenly I tried to set up a password of fewer than 5 characters and I got a warning. So kindly follow the password guidelines while setting up the password to avoid such a warnings. Once this is done, the installation process enter into the last steps. All the Qtera services got down and all the RPM packages got installed. After that, all services got up. And we can see the message on the screen displaying that the configuration of all-in-one console is get completed. You can log in to the QRadar console by providing admin password which you have set. It will also ask to update the password. After that, we need to review the QRadar license agreement. It is a temporary license and we need to apply for the perpetual license. We will dive into this topic more in detail in our upcoming videos. This is a GUI of QRadar all-in-one console. Here you can see the number of tabs like admin, log activity. Currently, I am navigating to the log activity tab. Here you can see the real-time streaming of events.